And hey everyone, it's uh, been a while since we've done a Linux. It's like uh, we're welcoming no beard and bearded. <laughs> it was hot in Florida. Something had to be done. <laughs> yeah, beards and humidity don't mix too well. <laughs> well, I've actually had coworkers coming up to me in the last few days saying, "I don't think I've ever seen you without a beard." Yeah, I. I <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen you without a beard, actually. It's, it's been since the beginning of, of This Week in Linux when I shaved it. It was like I started in December and beginning of January I shaved, and since that time I haven't. I've just touched up. Yeah, you just keep it neat, but you don't actually shave it. <laughs> it's like... Exactly. Yeah, I just trim it, trim it up every now and again, and that's about it. <laughs> but yeah, the, the weather and... I guess just sort of peer pressure got to me, and I, I said, "Let's let's give uh, unbearded a try." <laughs> now the real question is, what what does your wife think? Is she going to let you grow it back? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know if I'm going to grow it back at this point. Um, I might at some point in the future. She says and uh, has said several times she would prefer a goatee if anything. Um, I think she actually likes it there. I, I've got noise canceling headphones, so I can't really hear you. Yes, she says yes. Go <laughs> <No> team. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, anyways, moving on to the first thing. Um, this isn't purely Linux, but it is open source. Um, just for personal opinions, the new Mozilla numbering system is driving me nuts. Every block we, and the annoyogram that comes with it out you, have you upgraded have you upgraded I've got, I'm this close to going back to three something just so it will leave me the frick alone uh, no, I've been using uh, four and now six I guess and uh, the, it's just odd that they're going to major numbers loud yeah every uh, every minor update is a, is a major number now and I'm yeah. but, but then all of a sudden I saw like 6.01 6.02 it's like, wait a minute. Maybe they maybe they figured out how many plugins they're breaking because of the way the Mozilla plugins work. You know, they do a version check and so forth, and every time they change their number, that uh, plugins that haven't updated uh, break. <laughs> I guess it's making Mozilla take that effort be a, a little bit more useful in their browser and include more features, maybe. Not particularly though. Now the only only real plugins I use at this point are Gmail Manager, which I don't use anymore, and Firebug. And Firebug is still minimal usage. I, I occasionally use AdBlock for really obnoxious ad-prone sites, but not even that very often. Firefox is my utilitarian browser. I've said this several times. The the plugin I swear by, uh, Mozilla has actually like banned. They say it's bad. <laughs> If it, they won't even let the latest version of it be uploaded to the Mozilla thing. You have to go get it from the developer's site now. Uh, which, uh, so I, I'm waiting for that feature to come into Chrome or Chromium, and I will probably be switching browsers. However, I will. I am still going to keep Firefox around because there's a lot of those utilitarian ones, especially if you're working as a web designer. They're, they're just useful and. Chromium and Chrome are not developed enough to have those utilitarian plugins yet. Yeah. Um, I, I, on that though, I, I, the 6.01 gives me hope, but if this doesn't stop and we wind up with Firefox 7.0, 8.09, I'm noticing everybody's going to this just skip a number number system for simplicity's yeah. sake to make it sound. Do we think Linux is going to start doing this since they kind of skipped the version number when they went to version 3.0, or do we think uh, that was... I, 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 I was the, the primary purpose of it was uh, we've had this 2 point something for so long, and 2.6 specifically for so long, it's like that could be melded into one number because we haven't changed it in how many years. Uh, so they just went ahead and said, let's make this one number and then have sub... Yeah, there may come a time when we switch back to three digits and then back to four digits. Well, yeah, I think it makes it look like we're we're growing at a faster pace. Well, no, but you see, know, that, that that's the whole reason. Office twenty ten, which is like version fourteen, 
Uh, I mean, you, you've got these really high number of things out there you're competing against. Well, and see, that's the whole reason that uh, Mozilla's doing what they're doing. But, you know, the fact that they gave into the pressure and now the numbering system for Mozilla means nothing. I don't want the numbering system for the Linux kernel to mean absolutely nothing. Linux, right. well, Linux, the numbering system for Chrome and Chromium as well. That's ridiculous. I, 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 I know. It, it, it's, uh, you know, honestly, I, I think... Well now. I, I can't really tell... But I think as far as for Chrome and Chromium, we're technically on version 2 point something. Even though we're on version 13, I think we're technically on 2 point something. Because, I mean, they just added print preview for crying out loud. You know? Uh, but it, it's... Well, I don't think... Lin I think Linux would have a hard time continuing to grow at the rate it grows at if they started adopting that kind of numbering system for the Linux kernel. Be because um, developers and people who are developing stuff, you know, those numbers, they, they tell them what's going on. And when those yeah. numbers become useless, oh, you mean I have to take this completely apart for the next six months to figure out what's actually changed? <laughs> I, I hope Linux doesn't do that. That would be horrible. I mean, and like you said about the uh, the browsers, the biggest problem is anything that relies upon specific version X of the browser or of the kernel in this case. Oh, look, we've got a new version. Let's just start over. I think you said something similar to that a second ago, but I was yeah. Sort well, of not, and, and oh, look, this uh, this version of X doesn't work. Kernel version four. It only works with kernel version three, but it's only a minor version difference between three and four now. Yeah, I know well, it's not going to be exactly that, but it's like three point one, three point two. Well, no, Are I know, but three point ten. But but if they start numbering the kernel like that, basically, I would say probably eighty percent of the packs, which many distros use, would have to be completely rewritten because they're doing yeah. tests like that for they're like, oh, well, we can we can work with this, but I mean, well, the, I think a big part of the problem is is this going to hurt backward compatibility? Maybe there's something written in there that says if, if kernel version less than... But based on some of the tests, some of the packs I put in Linux distros have done where, they're, where they are doing a kernel test dependency, I'd be willing to bet most of those logic tests do not work with the 3.0 kernel. Um, it... It, it depends how smart they made them and how they wrote them. A lot of them are testing for like a 2.6 something blah blah. And 3.0 is not 2.6. So it's, it, it, it's a minor change. And if they wrote their software well, they can probably just go, oh, here's my minor update. You know, it's, uh, but it depends how well they wrote their software. You know, people don't always think that far ahead. It'd be nice if they always did, but... And it's open source, so the individual distros can fix that if they have to. Yeah. yeah, and since we've gotten the 3.0, I personally haven't noticed anything anything wrong. I mean, anything major jumping out at me, but I don't know. We could break something, and it could just be that Arch is dealing with it very well. Well, no, I think the distros have always kind of dealt with those hiccups rather well. Uh, I, I'm personally holding hope that the Linux... Foundation and the kernel development team, uh, particularly Linus, would never give in to peer, would give in to marketing pressure uh, because that's really the whole issue here. It's like, would they give in to marketing pressure to break what's on? I, I, I guess I get your logic with the 3.0. It just has me concerned that they skipped all the numbers like that. Because it's not like we didn't have eight. And it's not like we didn't have eight to go play with, you know. <laughs> so, okay. That, that was my favorite bragging thing about Linux. We've been on version 2.0 for blah, blah. Talk about the ultimate backwards compatibility. It's continued to upgrade. It. Okay. There, there is no backwards compatibility. We are just compatible with ourselves. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I know. Uh, 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 okay, continuing in the same train of thought, uh, I don't, how, how, do you screw around with what used to be 
Chrome slash Chromium Labs, then it became Flags. Any? No. No, I haven't. I spend I spend very little time in, in Chrome and Chromium, other than just uh, when I was managing my second YouTube account. Uh, okay. It, it, no. They have come up with the weirdest uh, management system. I can think of, and basically what they do is, uh, I think it's flags, like you type flags colon or whatever. About colon flags? Yeah. Uh, Experiment byte. <laughs> FPS counter, GPU vsync. Or is it flags colon? Uh, about colon flags. Yeah, about colon flags. That's but it's, they have all these little, basically every, it, rather than have an options menu and the ability to toggle things on and off in Chrome and Chromium, they've created this pseudo command line thing where you have to go in there and enable non-standard things. Once you get in there, it's, it's, it's gooey. But it's like you have to know to type that in your address bar. Which, why oh, I've got a, an add-on on mine that does that. Yeah, but it, it takes you to extensions, history, downloads, bookmarks, settings, network info, memory info, DNS info. I mean, th this is one that was designed for Chrome OS, but can be used on Chrome and Chromium. Can't remember what the extension itself is called. Chrome Access. Well, or you can just add, uh, alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can just add a bookmark to your um, thing there, which will have it. Right. Uh, but this one covers a bunch of different ones, including the flags and the extensions and uh, a lot of different stuff. Yeah, and see, th th these flags are honestly getting me a little wondered uh, because um, a, a, if you want print preview, you have to go in there to turn it on. It's not on by default. Uh, but it is available now for those of you who didn't know that Chrome added it last month. They did finally add it to Chrome and Chromium. Um, it's only available for Windows and Linux. They haven't added it to the OS X version of it yet. But that goes into another issue. It, I'm finding it strange what Chrome and Chromium, you know, because this is decisions being made by Google. They're adding certain things to certain versions of the Chrome core uh, for different OS's, you know, like Windows gets this, OS X gets this, Linux gets this. Sometimes Linux gets things that Windows and OS X don't. Other times Linux is just left out in the cold and not given it. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering honestly if that's deliberate or if it's limitations. I thought at one point it was limitations, but given one of the ones they recently have left off, uh, in Chrome OS, which as near as I understand is basically the Chrome browser running on a Linux core, correct? As far as I understand it, yeah. Okay. Chrome OS, you, you boot up a Chromebook, instead of the tabs being on the top of your window, they're on the side. You know, you have side tabs and, and things are organized that way. That's just the UI for Chrome OS. Unless okay. I haven't updated lately, mine still had them across the top the last time I tried. Okay, I've seen ones that have them on the side and ones that's not. It, they, they've enabled this feature in versions of Chrome OS. Hmm. Uh, I need to update. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's. But what I find strange about that is that is a flag slash labs feature that in the Chrome browser you can only turn on in Windows. So they're going for that UI in the Chromebooks, or some of the Chromebooks, but they have withheld that code from the Linux version of Chrome and Chromium. Uh, I, I, are they trying to like give Chrome OS a boost over other Linux distributions, or is, uh, is that an that's oversight? That's a good point. It, it, it's, it's like, they, they see the need for it. They've enabled it in Windows for people who want to turn it on, but the only way to get it on Linux is to buy a Chromebook and then figure out how to reverse that browser out of there and put it back. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's no limitation whatsoever if you can make it run on Chrome OS because 
that's Linux. Yeah. Uh, uh, do we think that's the left hand of Google not talking to the right hand of Google, or do we think Google's going to try and pull a, try, is going to try and create a Apple Linux with Chrome OS and so forth, and eventually... There's a part of me that says, uh, like you said, the left hand not talking to the right hand. I think there may be, I mean, there, it's possible there could be separate teams for each different OS, which would explain a lot of consistencies, but at the same time, you'd want to have a consistent core. Uh, at least the Chromium part of it that is consistent across OSs. Well, it's 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 selective. Like sometimes they don't give it to Windows. Sometimes they don't give it to, like with the with the Chrome slash Chromium thirteen. Uh, we now have Print Preview as an option, but OS ten has been excluded. And for the side tabs, Linux. Unless it's Chrome OS has been excluded. It's like if you go through the flags through all the various features you can add on a Chrome OS, there's this selective excluding of certain features from certain OSs. And the only one that rules them all is Chrome OS. <laughs> Which I guess technically would make sense. I mean, if, if there's anything they really want to devote their efforts to and to put as many features as possible into, it's their, their one money-making endeavor, I guess. I guess, but I, I, are those making money? I mean, are they selling? <laughs> well, that, I, I think they've sold some. I don't, I don't have any clue on the uh, statistics there, but I mean, the fact that they are for sale at this point means that they're a money maker. whereas traditional, well, I guess traditional Chrome and Chromium are in a way in that they all have the Chrome App Store, the web store, but that's not really the browser making you money. That's the apps that can run within the browser. Well, and see, that goes on to another thing there of, I, I want to lean towards it's the left hand not talking to the right hand because if you could have the same experience cross, then you're going to spend more money, which is what they want anyways, uh, or you use the platform they're creating more. But on the other hand, are they trying to make the only way to have the best experience on that platform is to buy the Chrome experience, which is the Chromebook? Yeah, I could buy either one at this point, but I'm not, it's, I have no proof one way or the other. 